you know, everyone, critics talk about this film as being very different from all of Coutinho's films because, as he says in the beginning, uh, they had no plan, right? They're just kind of like, they just knew. They went there and they were kind of like searching for the film in a way. Yet, uh, the film uh, very quickly uh, finds all the themes that are there in most of his films, right? So, since I know, I know you went there, you, you traveled with the crew, um, if you could tell us a little bit about that experience. And also, uh, underlining that, it really seems for those of us that watched the first film that began, the, that opened the series, Man Marked for Death, it really, you know, once you see them very close to each other, it really seems like Odinho was going back, not only to that place, but to that way of starting twice. <laughs> Uh, talking about returning, right? He, it's like he's going to start w going one way, and then he's like, mm, there's no intimacy here. We've got to redo it, right? Mm. So that's the, the return, um, the passing of time, etc. But if you could talk a little bit about those things. Yeah. Um, so Cochin was fascinated by the way people speak. Basically, uh, his, his cinema is, depends heavily on the way people speak. And he believed that um, in Brazil, there are a couple of places where you could find that kind of character. And uh, Rio, Rio is one of these places. But the richness of the language, and I think it's very well translated here, the subtitles, but in, in Portuguese, it's a very archaic Portuguese. Those people were not affected, and that's why one of the reasons why he went to this area of northeast of Brazil, because it's an area that was still at the time kind of protected from the electronic world. I mean, mm -hmm. n n not a lot of television, not a lot of not a, not a lot of radio, and not a lot of. Uh, literacy, li literacy. So words were cir circulating in that area for for ages, uh, hundreds of years, and some of the words that are spoken for Portuguese ear are very precious mm. and and very very new to us, which makes most of these sentences extremely beautiful because extremely new. And, and he got to know this place when he made Cabra Marcado para Morrer, Man Marked to Die, for, uh, for mm -hmm. that. And so when he decided to make a film on speech, basically, not what people say, but the way they say it and the way they choose the words, he decided to go there, so this was one of the reasons. But another reason is that <clears throat> I think I was I was saying this today. I think to you is that the beauty of Coutinho's work, I think, is is that from film to film, he kind of subtracts one of the tools of the arsenal of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So progressively, he abandons uh, script, uh, 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 narration, uh, music, uh, uh, movement of camera. In, the, in his later films, you will have a person sitting on a chair and a fixed camera looking at that person. Uh, scenery, everything is, is, is as if he was trying to find the minimum that you need in order to still have a film. This is, this is, this is his path, I think, mm -hmm. and this is what makes his, his cinema so powerful for us who like nonfiction film, because everything that's not necessary is progressively being left behind. And in this film, he makes the bet 
of going to a place, the only thing that he knew is that he wanted that place because of the richness of the language. But other than that, he didn't know anything. And the bet is, can I find a film? Mm -hmm. Can I find a plot? Can I find plot? There's no plot. Mm -hmm. But can I find a thread? Mm -hmm. Can I find, he abandons plot very mm -hmm. early. Can I find a, a thread? Can I find characters? Can I find a story without being prepared to? And because he's running on a budget and the budget starts on the day he starts shooting, he knows that he has about three to four weeks to find that story and to find those characters. And so that's, that's the beginning of the film. He's, he's on the van on the first day, the first hour, the first minute, minute of the film, and he says, um, okay, I'm starting here without a plot, without a, without a theme, without a location, without characters, without a story, and the film will try to find all of this, all of these, uh, uh, these things, and and if 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 I can't find it, maybe the film will be a film about the 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 journey towards finding something and and failing, but he finds it, mm -hmm. and I think you're very precise in your question because he finds. What does he find? He finds old people and he finds old people who tell stories about life but death and what comes after death, the metaphysics of, 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 of this part of, of Brazil. And, and, and why is he looking, why are these people here? Because this is what interested him. So in Brazil, there's this tendency to speak about Gouchinho as a, as, as a, as a living saint, uh, uh, someone who makes people say things that they wouldn't say to, to, uh, to other people. And they say it for the first time because Gouchinho is there willing to, 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 to hear and to listen. And anything that is being said will, will find home in Cochinho. That is true up to a point because what Cochinho usually finds in his films are people who are willing to share stories that also are stories important to Cochinho. He was very sick when he did this film. In fact, the film was interrupted in the middle and he had to be flown back to Rio because he almost died of pneumonia. He, I mean, he, he smoked a lot and he had, I mean, his health was very very uh, 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 fragile. So, and of course, death was was in his mind, mm -hmm. and and that's why he finds death in the film, and 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 the conversations are conversations that are important to him, mm -hmm. and also important to mm -hmm. those who tell who tell the story. So this is why it works, mm -hmm. because you I mean, have... Well, at the same time, if he was going to find, as you say, a, this, this preciousness of, of a way of speaking, mm -hmm. a, kind of prior to the arrival of a, a lot of technology, that was also going to die. Yeah. So there's a way in which wow. the, the, yeah. right, the, the film yeah. itself becomes an archive, yeah, of, of a that, world of, of a, a world, world that's 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 already Rosa yeah. is Rosa yeah. is this person who's like she is there <clears throat> she is his door to that but Rosa is already closer to him yeah. in a and in a certain way or to what to what Coutinho and his crew signify. This is something that he does in the film also is that he delegates in a sense to Rosa what what is the task of a, a director to find characters now. He, 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 Rosa becomes his, his ambassador into this world, a very small world. It's, it's a very small place. Uh, and, and there's a whole universe that comes, uh, mm -hmm. comes uh, is discovered by the film. It is very, very, very s mm -hmm. uh, small, small space with, I don't know, 30, 40 houses, and that's where he finds his film. But, uh, but yes, I mean, uh, he, he, you can see signs of 
the intrusion of this new world that will destroy them. So you have, you you have, you have the 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 the, the midwife who watches television. She's the only one who watches televisions and, and soap operas. And if you know a little bit about Brazil, you know that we have a very very powerful uh, uh, television, uh, a media company called Globo, and 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 the and, and the soap operas, the same soap operas as seen from north to south. And people start speaking the same way, which is a real way of speaking, because Globo is in Rio. So you have the homo it be speech become becomes homogeneous in a mm -hmm. sense because we we partake in the same we go to the same well to draw <laughs> our words, so to speak. You have you have this wonderful uh, 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 truck with 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 <laughs> with. <laughs> that announces uh, a political rally and also sells m medicine. It's mm -hmm. a very strange combination. <laughs> but again, you have you have this thing going around, and 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 you don't have horses anymore. Just just one man has a horse, and because because now you have motor motorcycles, and you have, I mean, you have you, you have the world coming, and mm -hmm. and and the, mm -hmm. the, and the modern world coming to this place and, 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 and it will be changed. And that's why also you don't see young people mm -hmm. because he was, uh, because that was an important issue for him, but also because speech was important to him and the younger generation would, would already have lost mm -hmm. the richness of, of the language mm -hmm. that these, mm -hmm. these old people mm -hmm. uh, are, are are using. I mean, and the, it's also interesting in what you're pointing to in terms also of the time frame, because what you know, this one of the one of the many wonderful moments of uh, the history of Brazilian cinema is Cinema Novo, and Cinema Novo in its first phase, as we know, that gave us films right like Vidas Secas, uh, among others, uh, was obsessed with that very region. Right, and so all the all the these are the characters who were the young people yeah. in the Sertão in the 1960s. You're right. Right, so there's a, and if you think that Coutinho himself begins, was part of was, was part, of, that, part of the movement, right? yeah. The impulse of Cinema Novo is a documentary impulse, mm -hmm. although they do fiction, mm -hmm. but it's it's always a small crew. It's always natural light. You don't have sets. Mm -hmm. You don't have. You have you don't have professional actors uh, uh, in 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 many of uh, in, mm -hmm. ma in many of the films. Vida Secas is mm -hmm. is one of them. Uh, you have you, uh, uh, you you have uh, very light cameras that go. So the impulse the, it's very different from from Argentinian cinema, mm -hmm. where I think that literature is what 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 informs cinema. Uh, Brazilian cinema, the the good Brazilian cinema, the the, the powerful Brazilian cinema. Has, <laughs> has uh, underneath it the 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 documentary impulse. Mm -hmm. It's just to go and see the faraway places uh, with a lot of improvisation, with a mm -hmm. lot of with a lot of uh, 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 the curiosity to see uh, the backlands of Brazil, basically. Mm -hmm. And but it's you a could documentary mode that is. <clears throat> very especially in Coutinho, and that's also what distinguishes him from the Cinema Novo a moment. It's a documentary impulse, but that wants stories, mm. right? I mean, that's what we see in Coutinho, I mean, really, and, it, you know, the distinction between fiction and documentary in his uh, filmmaking is a tenuous one, yeah. or a complicated one. Yeah, yeah it is. We, we, we talked about this, yeah. this, this morning, yes. And here you have wonderful characters who are obviously performing for the camera, like Leocadio, the wonderful man <laughs> that, that brings, brings the idea of a, of a primeval language, mm -hmm. uh, the Adamic language, in mm -hmm. which window was window, mm -hmm. and not fenêtre, <laughs> and not janela. Mm -hmm. For him it was janela, never window. <laughs> uh, and he's performing. He he knows. I mean, he has never seen a camera, and yet he knows how to perform as a wonderful actor for a camera. And this is for Cochino Bliss, mm -hmm. because he believed. Because he was, he was. Uh, I wouldn't say a disciple, 
but he was an admirer of Jean Rouge. Mm -hmm. And the idea that when you bring a camera into uh, any situation, what you do have is performance. Mm -hmm. And this is what he wanted to have, right? And uh, so you have him, you have the atheist at the end, a wonderful man, the only one who doesn't believe in God mm -hmm. in this whole place. And he's perverse, and you don't know what he's doing with Cochino. Cochino doesn't know what he's being played by the guy, he isn't. You never know. And so is he playing? Is he being playing in the sense of is he acting? acting. Is he telling the truth? Is he doing both? Probably he is, but what is what? You never know. And this is what this is the this is this is where Cochino thrives, mm -hmm. uh, where you where you don't know what you are actually seeing because the camera is provoking people uh, to tell the truth through theater, mm -hmm. and this is what he wants. Mm -hmm.